To be a team leader, you need to understand what that means and to be able to put yourself on the front line. And that is why offensive tackle Jason Watkins is one of Florida's team captains. It is not hard at all for Jason Watkins to appreciate where he is now as a fifth year senior and to remember how he was helped in his early Gator years. We really learned from the older guys that was here and we, we learned how, how to practice and how to um, play. Our national championship team, that was a big influence for us. I'm just blessed to be in that experience right there. And right now that um, I'm pretty much the leader of the team, I'm taking the ass, so it's my responsibility that um, I gotta get the young guys right. And so that's why every day we just go out there and just try to be the best. In addition to learning from the older players, Jason Watkins recalls how a statement from Coach Meyer helped him get his life and football headed in the right direction. It's where you are right now, it's not where you want to be, you can change. And I kept on saying each day and then some kind of way you could see it, I started changing day by day. And he was like, it's not going to change overnight though. And I believe that too, it happened over a time period though. And I started changing, started taking on better roles and everything in my life started to change. It went up like better, everything was going great for me. The success he has had as an offensive lineman comes down to practice, technique, and a workmanlike approach. You gotta take your lunch pill to work every day. And like the more you put in it, it's the better you're gonna be. It's like you don't wanna go to work starving. So yeah. Um, technique is the main thing you work on though. And I love pass protection. That's like one of my favorite things to do. So I love doing that. And now since you've got like these running backs that you've been hitting, run blocks been it's been extreme, man, because you can block for a second and they gone. It, it, it's so it's so good. So I love that also. Now what helps in the process is when you have teammates that you've become close with and enjoy the same line of work. Especially when I have Phil there, it's like since we've been here, we've been back and neck and neck the whole time since we've been here, like every day. And sometimes we'll be doing, working out in the weight room, you'll see him trying to get one extra rep just to beat me. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and like that, I think that just makes us better. It has been a long but good road that has led Jason Watkins to become one of Florida's captains and the leader when it comes to one of the Gators' post-game locker room traditions. All right, let's go. Jump up there. One, two, so let's go, man. Let's go. Coach Mick came up to me and he told me that I was going to do it. And I was like, oh, that was an honor to me, though, because like I was stepping up. I was like, me? Yeah, I know I can sing, but I don't want you to tell everybody else that I can sing. So. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, like I say, I'm just happy each day. I'll be looking for it every game just to do it. It took some time, but it all worked out for Jason Watkins and Florida football once he got his career in tune. For Inside Gator Football, I'm Steve Babbitt. The Gators' defensive success is contingent upon a team effort, but there is a center point where you find the unit's heart and soul. It all begins with the man in the middle. Anytime you look at a defense and you look at a great defense, you have to have a great player down the middle. And Brandon Spikes is that player down the middle for us. Brandon Spikes is in his third year of Florida football, second season starting at the middle linebacker position. But this is his first year, truly understanding his role and value as the leader of the Gator defense. If I come out to practice and I'm there, you know, I got a dope look, stuff like that, we're going to have a bad practice. But if I come out with high energy, you know, a smile on my face, ready to get better, ready to get other guys around me better, we're going to have a great day of practice, you know, and that carries on to the game feeling. So I feel like I can come out and get guys to play over their ability, you know, if I'm just, you know, roaming around, flying around with passion and making plays. You know, and I feel like they, they need to make plays too, so definitely I think it's to make other guys better. Defensive coordinator Charlie Strong is also Brandon's position coach. He relies on Spikes to be the leader, playmaker, the face of the Florida defense. He is the glue of our defense. He is the strength of our defense. He is the energy of our defense. As Brandon Spikes goes, our defense will go. And he has accepted that responsibility. It took him a while to, he didn't want it, just because, you know, a lot of times you say a young man's a leader, then he wants to step out, and he didn't feel like, hey, coach, I'm not quite ready for that. But now that everybody kind of looks to him, he knows that, hey, as I go, this defense goes, now he's ready and he's willing to accept that role. Number 51 likes to play fast and physical, and he has the size and speed to do that from his middle linebacker position. But for him, the best have that one needed quality. Instincts. You definitely got to have instincts. You know, if you don't recognize stuff or see it before it happens, you'll be a step behind, you know, on this level, in this comfort. You know, if you're a step behind, you beat. You know, athletes all over the place, just fast and extremely strong and big. You know, if you, you're a step behind, you, you'll miss the place. So. 
you definitely got to have instinct. His play, performance, and production tell you he's one of the best in the country. His smile tells you he's happy being a middle linebacker. I think it's the best position on the field because you're the quarterback and you get to hit people, you can cover people. You, know, you make plays all over the field, so I, I think it's the best position on the defense. And one other reason you can tell he's really into the middle linebacker thing, he picked number 51 because he liked Dick Butkus. For Inside Gator Football, I'm Steve Babbitt. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, extremely sorry. You know, we were hoping for an undefeated season. That was my goal. Something four has never done here. But I promise you one thing. A lot of good will come out of this. You have never seen any player in the entire country play as hard as I will play the rest of the season. And you never see someone push the rest of the team as hard as I will push everybody the rest of the season. And you never see a team play harder than we will the rest of the season. God bless. Going to run it to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, and Tebow levels the ball. Oh, my. Tebow throws the ball deep down the field. It's tipped, and then it's going to be caught by Harvin into the secondary, to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown. Tebow on play action and throwing left deep. Lewis Murphy, he's got it. Touchdown. Looks at go, and it's going to be intercepted. Brandon Spikes in open field, running the ball down the left sideline to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown. Oh, my. Wilson. Dropping back, straight back under a blitz. He's hit and run. There's the snap to Harvin, trying to run to the right. Harvin down into the goal line. Touchdown. Fires the ball down toward the goal line. Manny Johnson gets it. It's tipped, and it's going to be intercepted. Throws the ball low to Cooper at the goal line. He's got a touchdown. Oh. Dropping the throw. And fires the ball off. It's intercepted by Joe Hayden. Hayden down the left sideline in midfield. Hayden to the 30. Still has to the 20. To the 10. And to the 5. And down to the goal line. challenge would be against Hawaii, last year's Cinderella team that went undefeated and played in a BCS Bull game. What's up, what's up? Got great news for you. Got great news. Gator football is back. We're going to defer. We're going to play great defense. Hey, welcome to the swamp. The offensive-minded Warriors came out moving the ball, but the Gator D was going to put a halt to that. He looks to throw, looks right, nothing there. Wants to go left, and he'll be hit, and he'll be sacked as Lawrence Marsh gets the Gators' first sack of the season. Second and 10, Hawaii. Alexander looking back to throw and fires the ball down the middle of the field toward the end zone. It's going to be intercepted in the end zone as Ahmad Black playing center field intercepts the ball to the end zone for the Gators' first takeaway. The true sophomore from Lakeland with his first career interception. Tim Tebow and company wasted no time getting warmed up. 
And here's now Tebow trying to option, but we'll keep the ball to the right. Now nothing there. Reverses field. Tebow off to the left of the 10. Tebow to the 5. Tebow down to the pylon. Thought he had a touchdown yeah. signal, but they're going to say he just stepped out of bounds. No score. Here now is the handoff on a running play. Brandon James will get into the end zone easily. Brandon James drives it in. With Florida up by seven, the Gator defense kept up the pressure. Alexander out of the shotgun, takes the snap, looks to throw, and fires the ball to the right. It's going to be intercepted by the Gators, and it's going to be brought back. It's going to be a touchdown, Major Wright. After Major Wright took it to the house after a timely pick, the Gators had put up 14 unanswered points. Florida's offense struggled, but after another defensive stop, the always dangerous Brandon James and the special teams worked their magic. James 35, 40, 45, 50 across midfield. James at the 40, James on the near sideline. There goes James, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Oh, my, Brandon James with an electrifying hunt return for the Gators. With Florida up by 21, Joe Hayden and the fired up Florida D got physical. And before the clock ran down to end the first half, the Gator offense would strike again. And there is the snap, and the handoff comes to Rainey. He steps to the right, now varies it to the 20. Rainey to the 15, Rainey behind the blocker to the 10 to the 5, and he's going to take it in. Chris Rainey scores a touchdown on a 34-yard run. Oh, my. As both teams headed to the locker rooms, Florida was up with a solid 28 to nothing lead. Coming out of the half, Florida's special teams would get the offense back on the field. That marker across the 40. He got the marker. First down. There's the snap to Tebow. Hands the ball off quickly on the inside handoff. It's a running play to Jeff Dips. Dips breaks through to the secondary. Coming near sideline to the 30. The 25 to 20. Slips the tackle and take it all the way on a beautiful 62-yard run. Jeffrey Demps, a world-class sprinter, put Florida up 35 to zip with an electrifying touchdown run. After the Gators forced a Warriors fumble, the Florida offense took only two plays to score again. Tebow on play action, dropping back, looking to throw, fires a deep ball down the field, receiver makes the catch, Lewis Murphy spins free, he's going to go into the end zone with a touchdown. Ahead by 42, the Gator front four kept up the heat, and the offense was clicking again. After another Florida touchdown, the Gator defense was looking to score. And he's thrown another interception for Ahmad Black. And Black is going to return the ball on the near sideline. And Black inside the 50, inside the 40, gets free at the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Black is going to take it all the way for a touchdown. Oh, my. The Warriors put up 10 meaningless points at the end. But Florida walked away with an impressive 56-10 victory. That was excellent defensive football. That's the way to come out and play. You got offensive players that can't wait to watch the defense play. You got a head coach who can't wait to watch the defense play because you know what? It's four to six seconds of great effort. The Florida Miami football rivalry dates back to 1938, but it's not your typical annual in state showdown like Florida State. However, the Gators had played the Canes six times since 1985 and lost them all. So the intensity in the swamp for this nationally televised primetime matchup was palpable. Would Urban Meyer's Gators? rise to the challenge. Well, we can't afford for right here, big games like this. The national media was out in force. With the ESPN game day crew on site, Florida has enjoyed the most appearances on the show at 27, and 10 on-campus visits ties for most of any school. You are built for this moment. You're built for this moment. You invested in this payday. It's payday right now. Here you go. Look at this. Florida's offense came out on the first series clicking on all cylinders. There's the snap to Tebow under a blitz. Rolls to his left. He's got running room at the 30. At the 25, he has a first down run. Now Harbin comes in motion near sideline. There's the snap to Tebow. Hands the ball to Harbin on the sweep to the left side. 20, 15, turns the corner. Gets inside the 15 and comes to the 13-yard line. Tebow dropping back under pressure. Looks to throw the ball down toward the end zone. He's got the tight end. Touchdown! Aaron Hernandez got behind him, got open, and got six. Florida drew first blood, and not to be outdone, the Gator D would stall the cage. Takes the snap, rolls off to his left, coming near the boundary, still with the ball, trying to turn the corner, and he'll be grabbed and thrown down. The great speed of Carlos Dunlap grabbed him and threw him down. Florida's defense would hold Miami to a field goal, while Chaz Henry's picture-perfect punt created a special scoring opportunity. Foster the punt, and the Gators are coming after it. Jeff Dimps has blocked it. They sit the house up the middle of the field. Dimps got a hand on it. And it's going to be called a safety. 
Lightning quick Jeffrey Demps came through with a punt block and safety, putting Florida up by six at the half. The Gators came out in the second half ready to play, and the offense finally started to find its rhythm. No backs for Tebow, who looks to throw quickly and fires for Hernandez, who makes a man miss at the 36 to the 40. Hernandez, the 50, into Miami territory, and still pounding hard, and finally they slow him up and push him out of bounds. That's good for about 37 yards. Here's Tebow back to throw, fires down the field. It's a catch for Kyle Moore. The left elbow was inbounds. Tebow in the shotgun, has Harvin in motion. Here's an option toss to Harvin. Harvin trying to turn it up front at the five-yard line. Harvin will score a touchdown. The explosive Percy Harvin got his groove back and put Florida up 16-3, while Brendan Spikes and the attacking Gator D continued to shut down the Kane offense. Tim Tebow led an aerial assault on Miami's veteran defense, and last year's Heisman Trophy winner started shredding the Hurricane second. Tebow under some pressure, now steps up looking to throw and fires the ball wide open. Left side, Lewis Murphy. He just picked up 32 yards on a pass completion. Here's Tebow on a play action, dropping back, looking to throw down to the corner of the end zone. He's got a receiver, and it's a touchdown for Lewis Murphy. After a slow start, the Tebow to Lewis Murphy combo finished strong and the Gators were up 23 to three. Florida's inspired defense continued its dominance, keeping the Canes on the run. He'll be hit and drop as Jermaine Cunningham has gotten the sack. Marv in some trouble, now rolls out right, comes to the near sideline, still in some trouble. He'll be hit and dropped again as Carlos Dunlap has a sack back this time at the seven yard line. Miami made the mistake of punting to Florida's special teams MVP, Brandon James, and he made them pay again. James coming up on a short catch to make it at the 45 to the 40. James near side 30, 25, Brandon James to the 20, and inside the 20, got knocked down at the 16-yard line. The Gator offense would put an exclamation point on this historic win with a Jonathan Phillips field goal to wrap up a convincing 26-3 win before a record-setting crowd of 90,833 in the swamp. After the emotional and physical win over Miami, the Gators got a much-needed bye week to prepare for East Division rival Tennessee and the start of their SEC schedule. You lost the game, man! Lost the game! There's nowhere to go! Florida's special team's mighty might, Brandon James, wasted no time setting the tone against the ball. Driven back to James at the four-yard line, drops it. Picks up the five, comes to the 10, here's to the left, 15, 20. James between the hash marks of the 25, now comes out to the left side of the 30, he comes to the near side of the 40, James on his way to the 50, crossing midfield inside Tennessee territory, and finally caught at the 45-yard line on a marvelous kickoff return. Third and eight, there's the snap to Tebow, under pressure, shovel screen, gonna go to Hernandez to the 30, 10 and 25, sideline right to the 20, there's the snap, Tebow, now jump pass over the middle, wide open the end zone, touchdown, touchdown, oh my, Aaron Hernandez, he was quarantined, touchdown Florida. But Tebow to Hernandez tandem for a TD resulted in seven. Florida's defense and Janoris Jenkins put the brakes on the balls. Under pressure, has to throw quickly, he fires, and the ball is caught and then dropped. It's picked up by Florida. They pressured Crompton into a quick throw. That came from coverage on the backside of the quarterback. And then Janoris Jenkins, the true freshman from Pahokee, comes in and makes a stick, and Florida will take over. Tebow dropping back, looking, looking, now stepping up, feeling pressure, and flips the ball out here to the left side to Keiston Moore, who makes the catch and gets inside the 25. Jonathan Phillips drilled a 39 yard field goal to put the Gators up by 10 and Florida's defense shut down Tennessee again setting up the play of the day. James running up making the catch and James to the 25. James makes a tackle at the 27 gets to the 30. James to the 35. James to the 40. James to the 50 and there goes James at the 30. There goes James. James will go all the way for another punt return touchdown against Tennessee. Brandon checkerboard here in Knoxville and the Gators lead 16 to nothing. Florida's fast improving defense once again came up big. Second and goal at the two yard line. Jonathan Crompton marks out the signals and now drops the football. It's loose. I think the Gators may have fallen on it. He dropped the football at the two yard line and the pile ensues and the Gators have taken the ball away as Tennessee has a red zone turnover at the Gators two yard line. With a healthy Percy Harvin, the Gator offense began to click. That resulted in a Jonathan Phillips field goal. Phillips. 40-yard field goal attempt drilled perfectly through the uprights, and the Gators have scored three more. Tennessee then put together a drive of its own. But 
the opportunistic Gator defense pressured ball quarterback Jonathan Prompton into a bad throw. Prompton dropping back, looking to throw. Honestly, pressure rolls out to the right, throws the ball, it's intercepted in the end zone. Oh, my! The Gators get an interception back there in the end zone by Genora Jenkins, and Jenkins runs the ball out to the three-yard line, and the Gators have stolen another one from Tennessee. And listen to the booze in Needland Stadium. Janoris Jenkins came up with a game-changing interception to end the half. Florida's D again stuffed Tennessee, and a fired-up Gator offense took the field. And now here's a Tebow into the ball off to Emmanuel Moody, and Moody with the right side running, getting inside the 35, getting down to around the 32-yard line. Third and five, Tennessee showing a blitz. Here they come, and Tebow has to throw the ball quickly down toward the goal line. Touchdown! Oh, my! Percy Harvin got wide open, and against the blitz, Tebow unloaded the ball into the end zone. Florida was up by 27 and had silenced the capacity Neyland Stadium crowd. With the game well in hand, the Gator defense forced the balls to run clock. Nice run, but oh, my, was he pounded with a hit there from Joe Hayden. Tennessee came away with a touchdown, but... Florida would stop the two-point conversion attempt. Nicely done. The Gators' Justin Tratto broke it up right at the scrimmage line. Tennessee denied on a two-point try. That would be the Volunteers' only score, while Florida tacked on another field goal from the dependable Jonathan Phillips. The Gators left Knoxville with an impressive 30-6 victory over Rocky Top. After a heartbreaking one-point loss to Ole Miss, Florida knew they had something to prove the rest of the season, and it would start with Tim Tebow in his post-game press conference. I'm sorry, um, extremely sorry. You know, we were hoping for an undefeated season. That was my goal, something Florida's never done here. But I promise you one thing, a lot of good will come out of this. You have never seen any player in the entire country play as hard as I will play the rest of the season, and you never see someone push the rest of the team as hard as I will push everybody the rest of the season, and you never see a team play harder and we will the rest of this season. God bless. The Gators headed to Fayetteville, Arkansas, with a determined intensity to face the Razorbacks. Dropping back, looking to throw with protection. Now flushed out to the left, and he's going to go down. He'll be sacked. Here's a handoff and a cut play for Harvin. He gets to the 50, the first down still on his feet. Harvin with some good, strong running, breaking a couple of tackles. Here's the snap to Tebow. Shovel pass up to the inside, and James getting to the goal line. He's in for the touchdown. Brandon James. Florida's defense kept up the pressure. Big dropping back, now pressured, will roll to his left, will be hit and be brought down as Matt Patchen got in there to make the play. Second and 11, Dick dropping back to throw and fires over the middle. He's got the receiver and it's broken up incomplete. But Florida's special teams unit was not to be outdone. Chaz Henry strikes the ball, hits it very nice. It'll be a fair catch signal and he fumbled the fair catch. The ball is loose and the Gators have recovered the football. Michael Smith signaled for a fair catch and did not come up with it. And Brandon James got down there and got the ball. And the Gators will take over. There's a handoff now to running play. Coming off to the left side. Here's Dempsey. Left side got a hole. He's into the secondary. And he will score on a marvelous run of 36 yards. Jeff Dempsey scooting off the left side. Scores the touchdown. Up by 14. The Gator D continued to dominate. Now, here's Dick back to throw, and he'll be hit and grabbed and thrown down. Taking the snap, looking to throw, fires the ball down toward the end zone, and it's going to be intercepted back of the end zone as the Gators get a takeaway, and they're running the ball back. Joe Hayden bringing it to the near sideline. He's out across the 35-yard line. After a clutch Joe Hayden interception, Florida went into the half, still up by 14. Tim Tebow and company got the ball to open the second half, but after a few big plays, the Gator offense had to settle for a Jonathan Phillips field goal. With Florida up 17 zip, Arkansas finally got on the board. But Florida's offense picked up where it left off. There's a snap to Tebow again, the rocker step, and he drops back to throw. And a catch made at the 21 for Deontay Thompson. And now is Tebow on a play action, wanting to throw. Zinks ball to the end zone, and it's going to be caught for a touchdown. Percy Harvin on a beautifully thrown ball, the best pass of the day. With the Gators up 24 to 7, the struggling Razorbacks put together a drive, but on fourth down, brought in their field goal team. Attic is one for one in field goals this year, the 30 yarder, and this kick has been blocked. The Gators got a hand up right on the inside, and Arkansas does not score. Ahmad Black came up huge with the block, 
and put the quick strike Florida offense back on the field, but not for long. Eagle handing the ball off to the running play. Chris Randy spinning and twisting. 35 40 off the left into the secondary. 50 40. There he goes down the left sideline. Randy, he's going to take it all the way down to the pylon. He's in. Touchdown on a beautiful 75 yard touchdown run. With the Gators holding a comfortable 31 7 lead, Florida would close out the game, giving John Brantley and SEC Freshman of the Week, Jeffrey Demps, some valuable reps. Brantley takes the snap, hands the ball off on a running play. Here comes Demps, and Demps is into the secondary and gone. At the 30, at the 20, at the 10, and he will score on a 48-yard touchdown run. Florida left Fayetteville with a confidence-building 38-7 win and some much-needed momentum. This marked the first time since 1997 versus Central Michigan that the Gators had two players rush for over 100 yards in the same game. Jeff Demps had seven carries for 103 yards and two touchdowns, while Chris Rainey ran 10 times for 103 yards and one score. October 11th was a date the Gators had circled on their schedule ever since last year's heartbreaking loss to eventual 2007 national champion LSU in Baton Rouge. During the Gator walk, a focused Tim Tebow pulled a U-turn and pumped up the orange and blue faithful. Then it was time to man up against the fourth-ranked Tigers. Tebow drops it back, looking, looking, and throws the ball deep down the field. It's tipped it in. It's going to be caught by Harvin into the secondary. Harvin the 30. Cuts between the hash marks to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown! Percy Harvin makes a catch off a deflected ball and takes it in. 69 and a half yards for a Gator touchdown. Oh, my! It took only 98 seconds for Florida to take a 7-zip lead. The Gator D was also on a mission and stopped LSU's Charles Scott in his tracks. But Florida had to settle for a Jonathan Phillips field goal. The Gator defense forced another Tiger punt, and Brandon James made them pay. James goes over to the 19-yard line, far side, to the 25, to the 30. He's across now to the 40, the 45 in midfield, and finally tackled a beautiful return of 40 yards. After another special team's big play, Florida's offense had great field position to strike again. Tebow looking, looking, throws the ball to the end zone. A beautiful throw and catch. Touchdown! Percy Harvin scores! With the Gators up by 17, linebacker Brandon Spikes came up big. Fires the ball and it's going to be intercepted by the linebacker Brandon Spikes. Oh my! Spikes! He looked sensational out there in coverage and picked the ball off. Florida got the ball back. But after stalling, Carlos Dunlap and company again shut down LSU's high-powered offense. Fumble on the play. Oh, my! Here's an option play to the left. Tebow tosses the ball out of Dips. Dips left side the 50. Beautiful run getting into LSU secondary. Florida's dependable Jonathan Phillips nailed another field goal to put the Gators up by 20. But the Tigers got back into the game with scoring drives to end the first half and open the second. On play action, Tebow looking to throw, and he fires the ball down the right sideline. Lewis Murphy, he's got it. Gators have first down and goal to go on a 37-yard pass play to Lewis Murphy. Here's the snap to Tebow. He fakes the ball to James, trying to bootleg, rolled off to the left, and looking to get to the goal line. He'll score easily. Tim Tebow, touchdown. Florida answered with a clutch drive to put them up 27 to 14. And after LSU stalled, the Gator offense took over and continued to click. Here's Tebow on an option. Toss the ball left on a pitch to Dips. Dips to the left side to the 30. Look out, he's to the 20, and Dips is gone. He's in. Touchdown. Oh, my. Dips delivers. Electrifying 43-yard run on an option toss. And the Gators now open the lead. It's 33-14. to 14. With momentum on their side, Florida's special teams again stepped up. Trenton Holiday near side to the 10. Holiday to the 15. And a beautiful tackle that time. Cade Holiday. Here's Lee handing it off to Murphy. And Murphy is hit by the linebacker Brandon Spikes. A nice tackle. Garrett Lee in the shotgun looks to throw. And it's going to be intercepted the second time tonight. Brandon Spikes in open field running the ball down the left sideline. Breaks the tackle to 25. Gets to the 15. To the 10. To the 5. Touchdown. Oh, my. Brandon Spikes has just picked off his second pass. And this one, he took it all the way for the touchdown. 
LSU responded with a score, but that just fired up Florida's offense. Right side toss to Rainey, 30-yard line, 25, cuts to the 20, Rainey to the 10, and Rainey gets down inside the five-yard line. The Gators' Jonathan Phillips continued his perfect season with another field goal, and the Tigers were staring at a 44-21 deficit. Jeff Dimps, the running back. There's the snap to Tebow. He hands it off to Dimps, who runs right into the back of his own player, but then spins free and gets to the 50 and breaks the tackle. At the 45, still on his feet to the 40. He's the 35, he's the 30, the 25, and down to the 21-yard line. Houston Moore, the running back. Here now is a handoff to Moore, running up the field to the 15. Tries to cut to the 10. Moore still pounding. It's 15-yard run. The Gators are shredding the LSU defense with a great ground game tonight that's produced almost 260 yards. In front of a national TV audience and capacity crowd at the Swamp, Keaston Moore finished the scoring for the Gators. The 51 to 21 route of highly ranked LSU let the country know Florida was a team to be reckoned with down the stretch. I think it was the best fire team overall as a collectively as a group. And, um, you know, I, I just liked how when we were challenged, when they came back, when they had the momentum, you know, we bounced back, we drove the ball 80 yards for a touchdown, and uh, really just set the rest of the, set the tempo for the rest of the game. Yeah, here you go. Grab your hands, squeeze tight, take care of each other. One of the finest athletic performances ever. That was one of the best in college football history right there. You take that one with you the rest of your life. Grab your hands, squeeze tight. You did exactly what we said we were going to do before that game. You stuck together no matter what happened. That was a hell of a day, man. I had a few catches. Uh, Murph had a few. Everybody had a few. We rushed over 100 yards with the backs. And I think when we mix it up and just throw everybody at the defense, it's just going to be hard to stop us. The whole thing was just taking back the swarm. You know, we had guys on LSU trying to call us out and stuff. And I think guys came out with a lot of passion and relentless effort, and we got the job done. After their 51-21 dismantling of LSU, Florida enjoyed a much-needed off week heading into their homecoming game against Kentucky. The traditional Friday parade and Gator growl pep rally were a nice prelude to Saturday's pregame salute to George Mr. Two Bits Edmondson, who was honored before the game in celebration of his 60th and final season as Florida's greatest cheerleader. Florida's defense shut down Kentucky and set up a fourth down opportunity for the Gators' special teams. Tim Maste, the punt, here they come, and the Gators have blocked it. They blocked it, and they may pick it up, and then let's see, it's down inside the five-yard line. The snap to Tebow, he fakes the dips, he's gonna run the ball to the right, he's in! Touchdown, Tim Tebow! And the Gators take advantage of a blocked punt to score the first touchdown of the game. After a quick Gators score, the Wildcats got the ball back. Hit and drop there, and a beautiful tackle, Will Hill. Now here's Hartline on the shovel pass, throws it up underneath, and the Gators make the tackle quickly. Tim Maste to try and punt it again, here they come, and it's blocked again as the Gators got a block up on the inside, Jeff Dimps blocked it, the ball going out of bounds near the goal line on the far side, out of bounds at the one-yard line, oh my, oh, two punts, two blocks, Gators first and goal again. Debo. Takes the snap and hands it off to Brandon James, trying to run straight up the middle. He's in. Touchdown. In what Kentucky must have thought was a bad case of deja vu, Florida blocked a second punt and was up by 14 after only six minutes. Kentucky's next drive also went nowhere. And Florida's offense was back on the field. And now here's the handoff coming to Harvin, trying to go to the left side. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Oh, so easy. Oh, so Harvin. After a Harvin score, it was Florida 21, Kentucky zip, and the Gators were in a zone. Tebow, handing it off to Dempse, straight up the middle of the field. Gator first down run. He got out there like shot out of a cannon. Tebow looking to throw, fires the ball down towards the left, and he's going to be a catch, and it's a touchdown. Oh, my. Harvin was wide open, looked over his inside shoulder, made the grab, and the Gators have just posted four touchdowns in the first quarter today. With the homecoming crowd roaring, the Gators were up by 28 and just getting warmed up. Lonis Sieber, a junior from Knoxville, will try a field goal of 31 yards. There's the snap, the set down, the kick's been blocked! Oh, my! And Joe Hayden blocked it, and the Gators have caught it in the air, and they're going to try and run it back. Major Wright coming to the near sideline, and near the 40-yard line. Oh, my! They blocked another kick, and this one was returned! Dropping back, looking to 
throw, fires underneath on a crosser. He's got Dibbs at the 50, down the sideline, the 40, the 30. Dibbs to go Dibbs to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, touchdown. Oh, my. Dibbs has just gone 62 yards on a crossing pattern. Touchdown, 34 to nothing. Jeff Dimps' world-class speed burned Kentucky again, and Florida's smothering defense continued to shut down the Wildcats. Tom, a quick hitter, hands the ball off, but nowhere to go as Terrence Sanders almost was there immediately. Florida would give up three to the Cats, but Tim Tebow and his talented supporting cast were clicking. Here now is Tebow to throw and fires down the field for Carl Moore. On Moore with a catch in Kentucky territory. That's good for nearly 25 yards. There's the snap to Tebow. He's going to try and run up the middle of the field and easily scores a touchdown, Tim Tebow. The Gators took a dominating 42-3 lead into the half. Kentucky received to open the second half. Here's Hartline dropping back to throw under pressure. Throws, it's intercepted. It's picked off by Ahmad Black, and see you later. Touchdown. Oh, my. Ahmad Black. That was gift wrap. Nothing but green grass. Ahmad Black turned an errant pass into a quick six, and just like that, it was 49-3. to The improving Gator D made another stop, and the momentum was all Florida's. Rainey in the backfield. He takes a swing out, pass to the left with a catch. Rainey to the 50. Rainey skips the tackle right here in the Kentucky Territory. Tebow looking left, now rolling off to the left. 20. Going to run the ball to the 15 and to the 10. And down near the five yard line. He's close to the first down. In the shotgun, hands the ball off to Moore, trying to hurdle forward. And he's in. Touchdown, Keystone Moore with a hurdle to the end zone. After another near perfect drive, the Gators were cruising with a 56 3 cushion. John Brantley took over the controls for Florida. Brantley dropping back and looking and fires one over the middle of the field. He's got a receiver. And then David Nelson, great run, powering his way. He's got a touchdown. Oh, my. David Nelson would not be denied. And that's a 38-yard touchdown pass from John Brantley. His laser to David Nelson and the junior receiver's impressive finish was the perfect ending to a 63-5 homecoming route of Kentucky. The Florida-Georgia game is one of America's premier rivalries. And this year's game was called the biggest in the history of the series. Both teams were ranked in the top 10 and had their sights set on SEC and national titles. It don't get no better than this, coach. I done played in the game before the Super Bowl. It don't get no better than Florida, Georgia. The Gators had the added incentive of avenging a gut-wrenching 42-30 loss that cost them a shot at the 2007 Eastern Division title. Ready to see my boy win, baby. Sturgis strikes the ball end over end. Marcus Brown back at the two-yard line on the far side. To the 10, Brown to the 15, and Brown cut down short of the 17-yard line. Play action, first pass, throwing underneath, and the Gators will make a tackle quickly on Sean Marino. Here's the handoff to Marino. Marino is hit, stuffed. Oh, my! Was he hit immediately by the Gators as they surge right in there. Brandon Spikes hit him right in the chest. Stafford with a shotgun, makes a handoff to King, tries to run to his left, and he'll be hit and drop. What a great play by the Gator defense. Florida's defense made a statement on the dog's first possession, and Percy Harvin made them pay. The snap and the handoff to Harvin. Harvin turning the right corner, 35, Harvin 40, almost 20 yards for Harvin. Team block play action, rolls off to his left, throws it underneath, left side for Harvin, hangs at the 40, breaks a tackle, and finally brought down after another play for Harvin of almost another 20 yards. Now here's Tebow, option to the left side, going to give it to Harvin, to the 10, to the 5, there goes Harvin! Oh, so easy! Oh, so Harvin again! Touchdown, Florida, on a 13-yard run! The Gators' suffocating D held Georgia to a field goal, and after a heads-up recovery of an onside kick, Tebow and company took over. Tebow dropping back, looking, looking, and throws the ball down the field. And there's got the receiver, Aaron Hernandez. Tight end catch on the near sideline. There's the snap to Tebow, and he's going to run the draw. And Tebow down to the 15-yard line. Picks up seven yards against the Georgia defense. Near line digs in. Tebow in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Looks to run it. And Tebow's in. There's your record. 37 career rushing touchdowns for Tim Tebow. A Gators record. Up 14 to 3, the defense continued its relentless attack. He'll be hit, he'll be dropped. Jermaine Cunningham and Brandon Spikes doubled him up. Stafford looks to throw the ball down toward the end zone. It's going to be incomplete. Seven yard field goal try. The kick is up, and it is no good. It hit the left upright. 
Georgia's missed field goal would end the first half with the Gators up 14 to three. To open the second half, Florida's punt team came up with a game-changing play. The Gators may have downed it. I think they have at the one-yard line. Now here's the toss for Marino. Nothing up on the inside, and he'll be hit and dropped. Stafford again on play action, dropping the throw, and fires the ball off. It's intercepted by Joe Hayden. Hayden down the left sideline in midfield. Hayden to the 40. Hayden to the 30. Hayden now in some traffic. Stop to the 25. Still on his feet to the 20. To the 15. To the 10. And to the 5. And down to the goal line. My, my, my. Gators first and goal at the Georgia one-yard line. That's how you get one. That's how you take the game. After a game-changing 88-yard Joe Hayden interception return, it only took Florida one play to punch it in. Tebow running off to the left. He's in. Touchdown, Tim Tebow. That put the Gators up 21 to three, and Dustin Doe and the Florida defense continued to come up with big plays. Hands the ball off to Marino, trying to run, but he got tackled from the backside. Great play coming from behind. Stafford, under pressure, looks to throw the ball down the field. It's broken up beautifully. Dustin Doad. The offense was on a roll and came out looking for more. Now here's Tebow on play action. Looking right, now looking left. And throwing left, deep, long ball, left side. Lewis Murphy, he's got a touchdown. Oh, my beautiful play. 44 yards, Lewis Murphy. The Tebow to Lewis Murphy score was a dagger in Georgia's heart and put the Gators up. 28 to 3. Let's go. Yeah, you gotta win. Let's go. There's a toss to Marino, and he fumbles the toss, has to dive back and get on the ball. It's picked up by the Gators, and they're gonna run the ball back toward the goal line. And down inside the 10, Terrence Sanders has the football at the nine yard line. Oh my! After a no Sean Marino fumble, Florida continued its scoring onslaught. And Tebow's gonna try and run the ball up the middle of the field, wide open! Oh my! I like the parting of the Red Sea! And Tebow saw green! Touchdown! 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 Up 35 to 3, the Gator defense was on fire and playing its best football of the season. Stafford under some pressure, looks to throw and fires, and it's gonna be intercepted! What an interception by Dustin Doe! He tipped it and then caught it, and he picked it off! Stafford backpedaling to the three-yard line, throws to the left, and it's batted down. And here's Stafford to throw it again. And fires down the middle of the field. It's going to be tipped and now intercepted. Picked off by the Gators as Lamont Black is bringing the ball back. Near sideline 50, Black 40. Got to beat Stafford, the quarterback. And Stafford trips him up a little, and Black continues to run and gets down to the 25-yard line. The Gators have their fourth takeaway of the day. Ahmad Black came up with another Florida INT. And it didn't take long for Tebow to find Harvard. Fires the ball down the end zone, wide open in quarantine. Percy Harvin, touchdown. Oh, my. Gators are going to hit their scoring average for the year. They put 41 on Georgia. The 42-3 lead made the 2007 Georgia loss a distant memory. And Jacksonville native Tim Tebow returned for one last curtain call. Tim Tebow takes the snap, hands the ball off to Emmanuel Moody. Moody up the middle of the field of the 40, sprints to the outside, 45-50. Moody in Georgia territory, 45-yard line, still pounding inside the 40. A beautiful run for Emmanuel Moody. That's good for 29 yards. And Tim Tebow gets a standing ovation as he goes to the sideline. The talented John Brantley and Deontay Thompson finished off the Gator scoring. Brantley rolls off to his left and throws it left side. Deontay Thompson to the 30, good for 13 yards. There's the snap to Brantley. Here comes Georgia. Brantley steps in there and throws. Down to the goal line. Touchdown! Deontay Thompson scores! His first career touchdown catch! A year of frustration had ended with a 49-10 blowout and one of the most satisfying Gator wins in the history of the Florida-Georgia series. I'll tell you what, I'm going to tell you something. I love this team. Yes, I love who you are. I love who you are. I admire who you are. From the bottom of my heart, from this coaching staff, we wanted this one. It's special. It really is. It means a lot. And to come out to win like this, man, it's just a great feeling. Georgia, they're a great team, you know, and to come out and win like this, man, it, it says a lot about our team. After the impressive win over Georgia that put the Gators back in the SEC and national title hunts, Florida traveled to Vanderbilt for a chance to lock up the SEC East. Roll that line and go straight through Nashville, baby. Let's get it. Carlos Dunlap and Florida's punt team set the tone for the night. There's the snap, a little rugby style run to the right. The kick was blocked right up front. 
but it still travels upfield, and the Gators will pick it up near the 37-yard line. Florida's offense was also in two. Tebow hands it off to Harvin, who run to the right. To the 25, slips a tackle inside the 20. Play action, Tebow rolling left, throwing the ball in the end zone, wide open, touchdown! Lewis Murphy, all and all in the deep left corner, and the Gators score on their opening drive in Nashville tonight. After a Tim Tebow to Lewis Murphy score, the defense responded again. Walker goes in motion and takes a handoff, trying to jet sweep to the left, and he'll be cut down on a beautiful play. A loss of about seven. It'll be fourth and long. A fired up Brandon Spikes helped get the ball back, and Tebow showed his Heisman form. Thompson, right side, catch 45-50 in Vanderbilt territory. Drops back, looking, now stepping up, and going to run with open space to the 30. On a second and one, Tebow runs for about nine. Now Harbin motions as Tebow runs the option to the right and keeps the football, runs the ball, it's on the 20, it's on the 15, breaks the tackle, he's to the 10, he'll take it down and score! Oh my, a beautiful run by Tebow, 26 yard touchdown, it's 13 to nothing. The Commodore offense had no answer for Florida's D. Adams back to throw, he's hit as he throws, he fires the pass, it got deflected as Ahmad Black is there to make the catch before it hits the ground. The Gators got pressure on Adams, who had to throw it quickly, a deflection, and then Ahmad Black has his fifth pick of the year. Ahmad Black's interception gave the offense great field position, and Tebow made the most of it with a nifty move for six. Big Tebow run the ball to the right, breaks a tackle to six, and turns up field. He's got a touchdown! Oh, my! What elusive ball handling. A fake to Dips. Tebow rolled to the right. They had him. They couldn't finish him. And Tebow took it in for another touchdown. And in the first quarter, the Gators lead 20 to nothing. The defense again stepped up, and Carlos Dunlap got a rare second punt block in the same half. Knocked it again, and it's going to be taken down at around the 29-yard line. The Gator offense continued its amazing red zone performance as Tebow found Riley Cooper in the end zone. Throws the ball to the end zone. He's got a receiver and a touchdown for Riley Cooper. With a comfortable 28 to nothing lead, the defense turned it up a notch. Adams dropping back under pressure. He slips and he goes down. A loss of 11. Florida got the ball back one last time before the half and made Vandy pay. Here's Tebow dropping the throw in some traffic and still standing. And now throwing the ball deep down the field and wide open. David Nelson, touchdown! Oh, my! The Gators were up 35 to zip. And the SEC East title was one half away. Florida's Red Hot offense came out in a second half and finished the night scoring with a Percy Harvin touchdown. Here's the snap, and Harvin going to run. Harvin trying to hurdle to the goal line. Touchdown! Percy Harvin scores! Florida celebrated its road trip to Nashville with a convincing 42-14 win over Vandy and Coach Urban Meyer's second SEC East title in four years. SEC East champs, baby. Nice On a dreary, rainy afternoon that was a perfect backdrop for a game in the swamp, Steve Spurrier and his South Carolina Gamecocks came to town with the SEC's top-ranked defense and an upset on its mind. But the Gators wanted to prove they had a dominating defense of their own. He is stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Dropping the throw, now stepping up, looking like he wants to run, and the Gators close down on him, and they make a stop. Uh, here's Smelly rolling back and looking to throw the ball. Throws it away. Interception. Brandon Spikes will score. He's got a touchdown. Oh, my. Urban Meyer had told his team that grabbing the momentum early was critical, and Brandon Spikes and Ahmad Black were paying attention. Here's a quick throw, and it's tipped and intercepted. It was tipped by the Gators, and Hicks tipped it, and Ahmad Black intercepted it. Oh, my. At the 26-yard line. The offensive line continued to open holes for the elusive Percy Harvin. Tebow hands it off to Harvin, runs straight up the middle of the field, breaks a tackle to 15 to 10 to 5, touchdown! Mercy, Percy, he was quicker to hick up to the end zone. A beautiful 26-yard run. The Gators were up 14 to nothing. Then it was time for special teams captain James Smith to get in on the action. But he'll bring it out, and he now stops and throws a pass across to the left, and it's a loose ball. It's picked up by the Gators, James Smith. Oh, my! James Smith has just picked up a fumble on a lateral off a kickoff. Razzle Dazzle backfires. There's the snap to Tebow. He's going to try and run to the lap. He's in. Touchdown, Timmy. After Tim Tebow stuck it in for six, 
Florida was up by 21. And he's hit. Oh, my sack by Brandon Hicks. The Gators were on a roll. But after a fumble in wet conditions, the defense came through again, and Florida would get the ball back. Harbin motions in the backfield. Tebow fakes to Harbin, keeps the ball. Tebow to the 30, and out to the 35. That's a beautiful run by Tebow. And now here's play action for Tebow, dropping back to throw. A deep ball down the right side. Deontay Thompson, he's got a touchdown! Oh, my! Beautifully thrown, 46 yards. Deontay Thompson, give him six. Florida was now in front, 28 to zip. Though the Gators kept the Gamecocks from gaining much ground, they did manage to get a field goal in before the end of the half. To open the second half, the Gators and the always dangerous Percy Harvin electrified the capacity crowd. Tebow hands it off to Harvin on a cutback, off to the left of the 30, Harvin to the 40, Harvin to the 50, and there he goes! Harvin on his way! He's gone! He's gone! He's gone! 80 yards for a touchdown! Oh! Florida's smothering defense limited South Carolina to a field goal, and America's hottest offense took over again. Dropping back, looking to throw, and fires the ball for Murphy at the 50, and Murphy spinning inside the 45. It's good for 25 more yards. Tebow hands it off to Dips. Dips to the left, nothing there, bounces to the right. He's to the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. He's gone! Touchdown! Oh, my! Dips! Denied initially, but not finally. 38 yards and a Gators touchdown. Holding a commanding 42 to 6 lead and the defense on fire. Enter Brandon James. Taken by James at the 15, but they got down there quickly on him. James tries to veer off to the left to the 20, gets to the 25, still on his feet to the 30, 35, 40, and down the sideline to 50, and finally got caught on the far sideline. With great field position and the Gamecocks on their heels, the Gators continued to attack. Tebow back to throw and zings the ball over the field. He's got a receiver down there at the five-yard line. Tebow back to throw. And Hernandez, one-hand catch. He got it. Touchdown. Aaron Hernandez, a fine catch in the corner. Aaron Hernandez's one-handed circus catch made it 49-6. But the hungry Florida defense wasn't done. Here's Garcia on a play action, dropping back, nothing open deep. He rolls right, still wants to throw, and fires the ball down the right side, and it's gonna be intercepted, picked off beautifully by Will Hill on the near sideline, and coming inside the 45-yard line. The talented Chris Rainey finished the scoring with back-to-back -back impressive runs set up by key blocks from the O-line. First and goal, three-yard line. Here now is a handoff of Rainey up the middle of the field. He's in, touchdown, Chris Rainey. Florida's 56-6 blowout of South Carolina and its number one rated defense sent a clear message to the rest of the country. This was a team with some big goals still ahead of it. That idea seemed to be shared by the chief parrothead and one of the Gators' biggest fans. Hey, listen up! I don't get awed by many people. I'm awed by this cat. I want to introduce to you guys Jimmy Buffett. Week 11 brought the Citadel Bulldogs to town. This was also the last game for the seniors. Let's take care of these seniors the right way. Take care of the There's one way to do it. It's what we do. And at the invitation of Coach Meyer and the Gator football team, there was a very special person honored as part of Senior Day festivities. George Edmondson, Mr. Tubitz, who was bidding the Gator Nation farewell in this, his 60th and final season as Florida's greatest cheerleader. Edmondson had attended the Citadel, and both his first and last games leading the two-bits cheer for the Gators were against the Citadel. The Florida defense wasted little time. And it's intercepted by Janoris Jenkins on a return at the 40-yard line to the 45. Jenkins coming near midfield. There's Tebow on play action, dropping the throw, fires to the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown. Lewis Murphy in the right corner. And before you knew it, Florida was up 14 to nothing. The Gator defense kept up the pressure and got the offense back out there. And here's Tebow on a play action, looking to throw the ball. Fires it deep down the field toward the end zone. And there's going to be a catch and a touchdown for Riley Cooper. Florida was up 21 to nothing. 
And Florida wasn't slowing. There's the snap to Harvin. Harvin running to the right. Nothing there. Tries to reverse and sweeps back to the left. 15, 10, turning left to the five. Touchdown, Percy Harvin. Tebow drops to throw, looking, looking. Now firing deep down the end zone. There's a touchdown catch for Deontay Thompson. And here's a handoff to Rainey, trying to run off to his left to the 20. And Rainey stopped at the 19, reverses field. Goes off to the right. 25, Rainey 30, Rainey 40, Rainey in midfield with a blocker, Rainey down the sideline at the 20, and caught from behind at the 10 yard line on a run of 74 yards. There's the snap to Tebow, the handoff to Keiston Moore. He's up the middle, touchdown. With Florida way out in front with a 42 to nothing lead, the rest of the game was all younger players making a showing. Rainey, straight up the middle of the field, 40, 30, 20, 15, 10. Brantley hands it off to Moody, first down, off to the left, Moody to the secondary, a 40, the 30, a cutback at the 25, inside the 20. Rolls right, wants to pass, and will be tackled by Justin Tratto. There's the snap and the handoff to Moody, running off to the right, and Moody puts the ball over the goal line, touchdown. Florida had little trouble with the Citadel and sent off the seniors and Mr. Two Bits in style with a 70 to 19 rock. In the previous four meetings with arch rival Florida State, Florida had come away victorious. This year, the Gators knew they would be challenged by a tough Florida State defense that was ready to stop the powerful Florida offense. Take care of yourself. Take care of your teammate. Do your job. Four to six seconds, everything you got. In Tallahassee, the rains came hard, and Florida would open the game with the ball. Here's Tebow going to run the ball straight up the middle of the field at the 40-yard line. He's near midfield at the 50-yard line and finally tackled there on a beautiful 17-yard run. Third down and five from the 45-yard line. Tebow to throw, fires over the middle of the field, a low throw, and a catch made. And there's the snap to Harvin. He slips and then starts to run to the right, to the five. He'll take it all the way in. And touchdown! Oh, my! Florida came away with a quick seven, and the Gator D wasted no time slowing the Seminoles, leading them to only a field goal. Florida's offense had some trouble in the mud, but Chaz Henry pinned them deep and flipped the field. Tremendous punt. It'll go about 67 yards. Bonder dropping back and looking and looking, now stepping up and throwing a long ball down the field. It'll be broken up, and it's going to be intercepted on a tip ball, deflected into the hands of Major Wright. Oh, my! Beautiful coverage back there on a tip ball, deflected right to Major Wright. There's the snap to Tebow. Now rolling off to his right, Tebow's going to run it to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, and Tebow levels the blow. Oh, my! There's the snap to Tebow, hands off to Dips, dips through the opening, gets to the 40, dips near sideline 30, 25, 20, 15, and just got caught on about the 10-yard line. Tebow in the gun, rolls off to his left, now stops, looks to throw the ball back here, wide open in quarantine, the tight end, Aaron Hernandez, touchdown! Florida was now up 14 to 3, and the Gator defense was stiffening. Tebow rolling left, now stopping, looking to throw, and fires down the field. He's got a receiver down the field, David Nelson. And now looks to shovel again to Hernandez at the 20, spinning up field inside the 15, and pounding his way down near the 12 yard line. Tebow takes the snap, trying to run off the left straight ahead, pounding down to the goal line, and a powerful Tim Tebow touchdown run. Florida was pulling away with a 21 to 6 lead. Florida's D held up strong, only giving up a field goal to FSU. The Gators then took to the rain-drenched field to mount another drive. Here's Tebow back to throw and sings it down the field. Lewis Murphy in a catch. Here's Tebow again wanting to pass, rolling off to his left, throws the ball down toward the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown. Aaron Hernandez scores again. Florida was up 28-9 punctuated by a Seminoles muff on a fake field goal attempt to end the first half. He makes the catch off the fake and then falls down. Florida State would get the ball to start the second half, but not for long. They throw the football and it's intercepted. Right to Brandon Spike to the 35 to the 30, 25, inside to the 20 yard line. Brandon Spikes with another pickoff, beautifully done. And there's the snap to Tebow on third down, looking, looking, now throws the ball down to the end zone and it's gonna be caught. On the sideline, in the end zone, Lewis Murphy! Oh, my! In just over a minute into the second half, Florida struck again with an interception and a touchdown, putting the Gators up 35-9. to nine. The Gator D held FSU again, and 
the Florida offense hit the ground running. Here's Tebow handing off to Randy, and a hole opens up the middle. Randy out to the 40, Randy to the 50, Randy into the secondary, 40, 30, 20, 15, and they got him and just inside the 15-yard line, 62 yards on the run. After Randy's huge run, Florida had to settle for a field goal. After a Florida State score, Florida special teams blocked the extra point attempt. The Gators were sailing comfortably with a 38 to 15 lead. But Florida's Janoris Jenkins and the rest of the Gator D wasn't finished with FSU. He fires it and it's gonna be intercepted by Janoris Jenkins. At the 40 yard line, the Gators have picked off FSU's quarterbacks three times today. The Gator power offense decided to do a little mud running. To the 25 to the 20, near sideline, 15, 10, 5, tries to get the ball to the pylon, and he's out of bounds at the two-yard line. Tebow running to the boundary, now tosses to Demps, and Demps on a catch on the toss, takes it in, scores, touchdown. Florida finished off FSU 45 to 15 and ended the game, sacking FSU's Drew Weatherford three times. This is a it's a great rivalry. It's one of the biggest that we play, and uh, you know it means a lot. We play for these coaches, we play for each other, we play for this university. Uh, we have a lot of passion, enthusiasm, and we care a lot about what we're doing. You know, I, I grew up a Seminole, and uh, just to come back and get at them like that, I mean, it's, it's great, man, and getting in the end zone, I love it. This is a great rivalry, man, and it just feels great to go 4-0 against Florida State. The Gators' sights were now set on Atlanta and the SEC championship game to face Alabama. Florida had pounded through the rest of its regular season undefeated with a high-powered offense and a punishing defense. Hey, well, Facing the number one ranked Crimson Tide was considered a battle for the ages. Alabama had veteran quarterback John Parker Wilson and a hard-nosed running back in Glenn Coffey. On the defensive side, they had the imposing Terrence Cody. The Tide chose to receive, and the Florida D was put to the test early. John Parker Wilson under center, hands the ball to Coffey. Coffey runs straight ahead and powers out behind the huge line but where the Gators pinch down. Coffey takes another handoff and tries to run off the left side, and there's a tackle made by Ryan Stamper. He drops back, looks to throw, fires over the middle of the field, and Ahmad Black got in there. He made the catch, but Ahmad Black made the tackle, and that's short of a first down. Florida had passed its first test. Now, a focused Tim Tebow and company took to the field. Tebow in the gun, takes the snap, looks to throw, and fires the ball to Murphy on a slant. He makes the catch and gets to the Alabama 43-yard line. Alabama shows blitz from the middle linebacker. Tebow runs the option to the right to Demps at the 40, at the 35, and Demps tackled after a first down run. Tim Tebow runs the ball to the 30, 25, 20, inside the 20, got knocked down on a big tackle, but that's a nice run for the Gator quarterback. Tebow all alone. Alabama blitzing. Tebow throws quickly left side, down in the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown, Carl Moore. With Lauda grab it, and the Gators score a touchdown on their opening drive. The Gators scored the first points of the game. On the next drive, Bama came away with seven points of its own. Two programs began to dig in fighting for national respect and an SEC championship. On its next possession, Bama tried the right side again, but Janoris Jenkins' key tackle forced the Tide to settle for three. Dropping back under a blitz. He's hit as he throws and he fires. Incomplete. In the second quarter, Alabama, struggling to move the ball in the red zone, lined up to kick again. They're going to fake it, and here now they're going to try and run the ball, and he'll be hit and dropped at the 31-yard line. And the Gators took over. Tebow dropping back under some pressure, steps up to run, 35-40, and out near the 45-yard line. That's a first down. Tebow fakes the ball to Demps, drops back, wants to throw, and fires a deep ball down the sideline. Riley Cooper there, 20-yard line, 15-10, and jumped out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Oh, my. Phillips, 19-yard kick off the left hash. There's the snap, the set down, the kick is up, it is good. A Jonathan Phillips field goal tied the game at 10-10. Florida's special teams kicked a deep ball, and Alabama's Javier Arenas stepped up. The Gator defense kept them there, getting the offense back on the field. Tebow dropping back, going to run it again to the 30. He gets inside the 30, has a first down, he gets hit hard. Tebow faking the ball to Moody and looking to throw and fires down the field. Hernandez on a catch, and he's got the ball. First down at the five-yard line. Third and goal. There's the snap. Here comes Alabama. He looks to make the throw down to the goal line. Touchdown, David Nelson right there to make the reception. 
With that Tim Tebow to David Nelson TD, Florida went into the half up 17 to 10. Florida received the ball to open the second half, but was unable to gain any ground. The third quarter would belong to the Crimson Tide. Alabama was grinding out running plays, scoring seven on one drive and a field goal on another. Here's the Alabama kick, and it's a long one. Back to the goal line. James going to run it up to the 15, to the 20, and to the 25, and up to the 30, and trying to slip three out to the 35, and up to the 38-yard line. On a 38-yard kickoff return to end the third quarter, the Gators try and regain a little momentum as they try and regain the lead. Florida had been called out all week with questions about toughness, and that's when Florida saved its best for last. Here's Tebow on play action, dropping to pass. Looks to swing it out underneath left side. Nelson makes a man miss at the 20, at the 15, and down to the 15-yard line. He put a little move on Dante Hightower that time. An option on a shovel pass to Hernandez at the 5, at the 4, at the 3-yard line. And that's the Gators first down on a shovel to the tight end Aaron Hernandez. Here now is Tebow going to run the left option to Dimps. And Dimps will run in untouched for a Gators touchdown. Oh, my. Take the lead here in the fourth quarter. Florida was up 24 to 20. And Brandon Spikes and the rest of the Gators could not wait to push back the tide once again. Wilson dropping back, looking left. Now going to throw the deep ball down the right sideline. And it's going to be broken up. The Gators had good coverage with Hayden on Julio Jones. And they're going to run the ball to Cox. And Coffey gets a couple of yards and gets dropped. Third down eight. Now here's Wilson dropping back, straight back under a blitz. He's hit and run. Oh, my. Jermaine Cunningham has the defensive play of the night. A sack back at the 31-yard line and a loss of 12. Jermaine Cunningham and the rest of the Gators delivered, putting Florida's red-hot offense back on the field. Tebow dropping back to throw. Fires the ball deep down the side for Murphy. Far sideline, a catch. That's good for the Gators, 33 yards and the first down. Here's Tebow on a play action, looks to throw. Fires high, he's got a catch. He threw high, but Aaron Hernandez says, I go high. The tight end makes the grab. Tebow looks and looks and throws the ball low to Cooper at the goal line. He's got a touchdown on a slant play. Rayleigh Cooper, a catch. Oh, my. Gators by 10. Florida put the tide to rest with that touchdown. With only 2.50 left on the clock, Florida 31, Alabama 20. Florida's Joe Hayden officially ended the game for Alabama. Under some pressure, here comes Spikes. They hit Wilson as he throws. The ball's going to be intercepted. Right on the near sideline, Joe Hayden bringing it down inside the 20. Now cuts and veers to the right at the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. Joe Hayden, there you go, Joe. And the Gators have a pickoff, and they've got their 24th school record tying interception. Oh, my. The Florida Gators have come from behind with a two-touchdown rally in the fourth quarter to win their ninth SEC championship game as the streamers come tumbling down from the roof of the Georgia Dome celebrating other Florida victory here in Atlanta as the Gators have beaten the Alabama Crimson Tide and knocked them from the ranks of the undefeated. The final score here in the championship game tonight, Florida 31 and Alabama 20. Best feeling ever is, man. I, I told everybody before the game, it don't get no better than the SEC championship game, and it damn sure don't. This is the best time ever. It's great, man. It feels like the Super Bowl of college, man. We came out, we played hard, and we served every last bit of it. feels unbelievable. I mean, just to get this victory and just to be a part of this great team, this is a special team. And I love these guys, you know, we're a family, and it's just an awesome feeling. Thank you very much, Nation. The following evening, Florida would await the decision on a BCS bull bid at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Time to make it official. No big surprise, the FedEx BCS National Championship game, January 8th in Florida, and that scoreboard at Dolphin Stadium could get a serious workout because Oklahoma and Florida are coming. Florida had been down this road not long ago and knew it would be five long weeks of disciplined preparation. Urban Meyer paced his practices the same way he did in 2006, releasing his players on December 23rd to spend time with family. An oddly empty Florida football complex still had one resident. Well, 
I just feel like I just owe, owe people back just for being by me and just sticking through everything with me. I'm a hard worker, so anytime I can put in work and then, uh, and then and this is not some championship, uh, if you can't work to play in this game, then you, you shouldn't be playing football. With weeks of tedious media coverage and hype, game day finally arrived. Florida entered the stadium jovial and upbeat. We hear now. Yeah. Florida would have to contend with Oklahoma's high-powered hurry-up offense, the same offense that had Heisman winning quarterback Sam Bradford and was averaging 60 points per game in the last five games of the season. This would only be the second time in history that two Heisman winners would face each other for the national championship. Florida set the tone early. Bradford dropping back, up short, now fakes and throws the ball deep down the left sideline. It is going to be incomplete. It would have been caught, but there was a monster hit by Major Wright. The Gator defense had shut down the Sooner high-powered offense. It was the first time all season that Oklahoma did not score in the first quarter. Tebow swings it out quickly to the left for Harbin. 25-30, Harbin 35, Harbin still pounding hard, and there's a play of 14 yards and a Florida first down. Tebow on play action, rolling left, looking to throw the ball over the field. He's got the tight end, Hernandez crossing route, and a first down getting inside the 25-yard line. Tebow back to throw into some pressure, steps up with the ball, now stops and throws it down the field, and got a receiver inside the five-yard line. Lewis Murphy had it, and he gets to the goal line. It's going to be called a touchdown. But as Oklahoma had shown all season long, they could strike and strike fast on the sidelines. Defensive coordinator Charlie Strong made adjustments. On Florida's next series, Tebow threw another uncharacteristic interception, and momentum swung over to the Sooners. 57% on fourth down. They hand it off to Brown, and Brown is hit and stopped. Oh, my! A touchdown saving tackle by Torrey Davis. Torrey Davis and the rest of the Gator D came up huge with an impressive goal line stand. Oklahoma appeared stunned, and the momentum had clearly shifted back to Florida on this electric run by Percy Harvin. And Percy Harvin hurrying out to the 48-yard line on a magnificent 45-yard run. But Florida was unable to sustain the drive, and Oklahoma's playmakers moved the ball with great speed. Oklahoma's hurry-up style was working. Surely, the Gators were not to pull off another goal line stand. There's the snap. Bradford looking, looking, fires the ball down toward the goal line. Manny Johnson gets it. It's tipped, and it's going to be intercepted. Oh, my! Florida had held the most prolific offense in the history of college football to just seven points. This game was a test of wills. Hey, baby, let's put go. Hard on the table, baby. Hey, let's, let's go. go. Get in here. Let's go. Get in here right now. Get in here. Hey, we got 30 minutes for the rest of our lives. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. For the rest of our lives. That's our bet on first down. It ain't happening. We get the ball. I promise you one thing. We're going to hit somebody, and we're taking down the field for a touchdown. I okay, guarantee right. you that. Now Tebow's going to run an option and keep the ball and run it to the 45 and get out to the 48-yard line and pick up 12 yards. And he's trying to fire up this crowd. Third and 10. And Tebow back to throw, steps up to run to the 30, near side 25, and breaks a tackle, gets inside the 20 to the 19. He's got a first down. Oh, my. There's the snap to Harvin, trying to run to the right. Harvin down in the goal line. Touchdown. Oh, mercy, mercy. Gators have taken the lead. The Gators closed out a powerful drive, taking the lead 14 to 7. A determined Gator defense kept up the pressure on Sam Bradford. With that stop, Oklahoma had to settle for a field goal attempt. There's the snap, the set down, the kick has been blocked! Oh my! Right up on the inside, had no chance! There were all sorts of Gators there to block the kick! The Gator offense struggled on the next series, getting pressure on Tebow. The battle raging on. Florida's defense battled Oklahoma each and every play. But a third goal line stand was improbable, and the game was suddenly tied at 14. The Gator offense had to muster the team's energy. 
fleeing in pain, Percy Harvin made a statement. Getting it off to Harvin, a quick hitter. Harvin to the 25, Harvin to the 30, Harvin to the 40, Harvin down the sideline to 50, Harvin to the 40, Harvin to the 30, and Harvin finally shoved out of bounds. Here's Tebow handing it off to Harvin again. Harvin to the 20, Harvin to the 15, and Harvin down to the 14 yard line. But Harvin is a little slow to get back up after that run. As the Gator medical staff now looks at Percy Harvin. Dependable Jonathan Phillips put Florida up by three and put a re-energized Gator defense back on the field. Bradford jumping back under some pressure, looks to throw, fires the ball on the field. It will be intercepted. Ahmad Black took it right away from the Oklahoma receiver. It looked like it was going to be a catch for Oklahoma, but there was Ahmad Black to strip it away. The stunned Heisman Trophy winner left the field in front of the increasingly quiet Oklahoma fans. Like they did against Alabama, Tebow and the offense could smell blood. Fires the ball on the middle of the field. David Nelson runs there and makes the catch. Here's Tebow. Going to run. Jump pass. Throw to the end zone. And a touchdown. David Nelson caught the jump pass. In the end zone, David Nelson scored. Florida was now up 24 to 14. With another defensive stand and 226 on the clock. The celebration had truly started. Urban Meyer just got a Gatorade bath on the sideline. Gators in a victory formation. Tebow takes the knee. More flash bulbs pop. The Gators bust from the sidelines. The Florida Gators have won another BCS National Championship, stopping the highly regarded Oklahoma offense and holding the 14 points. The Gators win the National Championship tonight here in Miami. The final score, the Gators 24 and Oklahoma 14. Most of all, I'm just thankful, man. It's, it's been a long season for us, though. We battled, um, battled through the season. To come out and win like this, especially as my senior year, though, it, it's just tremendous. It's the best feeling in the world, man. I feel like last time we were here, our whole class was kind of young, 06. But we, uh, we put so much work and we led this team to back, back to where we wanted to be. And uh, it's great to be a national champion. We got great leaders on the team. Tebow Spikes, I mean, they're the two main captains on our team, man. We just, they just brought us all together and we played well. Oklahoma, they're a real high-powered team. And the thing Coach told us about, when they're going to make plays, when they make plays, just don't fall. Just keep fighting, keep fighting. That's what we did. They got in our red zone. A lot of times, the one-yard line, five-yard line, we just kept up, kept believing in each other and played hard defense. You know, we knew from the jump, you know, it was going to be about defense. You know, our guys just showed character when we got to stop. You know, we knew it was a momentum change. We expect to play great on defense, and I think we've done that. Our coach has done a great job of, you know, getting us prepared. But, hey. Go Gators. It, it's a dream come true uh, to, to, win, to win two out of three. Uh, it's, it's not many teams that did that. And uh, like I said, nobody gave us a chance. Uh, our D-line was too small, not tough enough. Offensive line wasn't tough enough. And hey, we, we proved them wrong again. And I just thank God, man, to be able to do it. I came out here to do today, man. And I'm just proud of my teammates and the coaches, man. We came so far, battled so much adversity, and now, now we finally made it. It's just an unbelievable night. Just a dream come true. Uh, you know, my college experience has been a dream. It's been so unbelievable. I'm just uh, so happy I made the decision to come here and play for Coach Meyer and play with these guys. And I'm so proud of it. We fought for four quarters and we played really, really hard, and that's why we won. It was a great night in Miami for the Gators and their fans, totaling three national titles, two in the last three years under coach Urban Meyer. It was determination and grit. A promise by Tim Tebow was a promise kept. It was a team that learned how to overcome and not back down. It was old school. It was new school. It was the 2008 national champions, Florida Gators. So thank you, God bless, and I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Oh, and by the way, one more thing. Let's do it again, I'm coming back.
That's what's up. Over the top. Can you invite you to win? In two years of Florida football, Tim Tebow has experienced a conference championship, a national championship, and winning the Heisman Trophy. Now it's on to year three, and he still wants to add more to his resume as starting quarterback. In his first year as Florida starting quarterback, Tim Tebow became the first sophomore ever to win the Heisman Trophy. He has learned to realize the impact of that award getting ready for 2008. You realize that you will forever be known as the 2007 Heisman Trophy winner. That always precedes your name when people introduce you. And so you just you never really think about how big it is. You think about, yeah, it'll be great for that year, but that's going to be with you the rest of your life. Now it's back to work, and Tim is trying to put what he learned last year into becoming a better quarterback. Sometimes you, know, you just got to force yourself, okay, here's, here's the drop. You're, that's all you're going to do. You're not going to make a play. You're going to sit there and be a, just a quarterback. And then sometimes you got to also be an athlete with that. Um, but it's sometimes just you know working out fundamentals and trying to practice them to perfection. When you have the ability to be a playmaker and improvise the way he does, there's a fine line to when to improvise, when to just manage and let's just get rid of the ball and play the next play. There's development in that, and then there's just judgment and experience that comes with it. But Tim Tebow knows what makes him different at that position and the instincts that tell him to run. I think you got to be cautious and sometimes, you know, uh, watch what you're doing. Maybe not have to hit somebody and fight for two marks or yards. Maybe get down or get out of bounds. Um, and so you got to be smart with it. But, but then again, you can't play like you're someone else. You can't play like, like someone who doesn't like to be physical or someone that, that doesn't like to, to run around and be an athlete. So I think that's a huge part of my game. Now, when you watch Tim Tebow play, do you ever wonder why he wears the number 15? Here are just a few things about him you may not know. I think that number found me. In high school, I was number five, and I wanted to be number five, but Bubba had number five, and so you know, I was looking at the, at the numbers that I could have, and I saw 15. So I said, hey, I'll take five. Just throw a one on, in front of it. And so you know, it's worked out good for me so far. One, I like Frank Sinatra. That's old school. Not a, a lot of people listen to him. Um, two, I like Quiche. Not a lot of guys like Quiche. You ask the guys on the team right now, I bet Maybe 10% would know what Quiche is. Well, start spreading the news. This Quiche-loving quarterback is looking to play better than he did in 2007. For Inside Gator Football, I'm Steve Babbitt. The Swamp and Gator Football has a brand new front door. That, along with the renovated weight room, has Florida football and those who work closely with it as excited as ever to come to work. Now in place for Florida football is a brand new complex home to the Gator football offices, the Gator room for recruiting functions, and a brand new entryway that is open to visitors. Among the highlights, the national championship and Heisman trophies, other college football awards, videos and photos showcasing the accomplishments of Gator football. Phenomenal. I don't, I don't think anybody has, I know nobody has anything better. I mean, it is, it is absolutely coach friendly, it's player friendly. Um, it, it's not over the top, but at the same time, when you walk in, you got the wow factor. The entryway where the Gator grades where they have the chance to come in and punch and watch some of their old film, watch some of their old highlights, it's going to be exciting. And then to walk up through the coaches' offices and just to see the renovations there. And then to go to the weight room. I don't know if I've ever been in a weight room that large. The strength and conditioning complex was completely renovated and expanded to almost 21,000 square feet, including a synthetic practice turf area 60 yards long. It's unbelievable. You know, we got the best facilities in the country. Uh, it's unbelievable. I think I really would put our weight room against anybody's in the country. Along with new weight equipment, including 20 platforms and power racks, 20 pieces of plate loaded equipment, 25 units of performance cardio equipment, just to name a few things, you also have eight state of the art TV monitors, sound and video equipment for motivation and teaching. Compared to what it was when I first got here, it's just, it's unbelievable how much it's changed. And the job that Coach Meyer and them all done, you know, getting it right so people will really want to come here and be impressed with our facility we have and everything we've accomplished. That's really neat. Proud to be a part of it. It truly is a blend of modern technology embracing and honoring Florida football's past, helping the present, and preparing for the future. For Inside Gator Football, I'm Steve Babbitt.
For more than 100 years, the Gators have been playing football, and over that time, have established traditions that make up the Florida football experience. One of those will take on a new look next season. George Edmonds and Mr. Two Bits leads his traditional cheer in this, his final season. It began on a football Saturday in 1949 against the Citadel with a small group of fans. And over the course of 60 seasons, has grown into what you see today. started, I got eight or ten people cheering, and as long as they were cheering, the motivation was there, and then I'd get a hundred people, and then two hundred. Now I say there's ninety thousand people, and they're enthusiastic for the Gators, and that's what is gratifying to me, to know, look back after sixty years, that maybe I had something to do with turning around all this emotion. In those earlier years, coat and tie was the dress code for men coming to games. Game day clothing would change for most, but not entirely for George Edmondson. Back when I was wearing a jacket, I wore a little long sleeve yellow shirt. It was good combination with the gator tie. And so after the things started relaxing a little bit, I kept wearing the yellow shirt. And somebody said, why don't you wear an orange shirt or a blue shirt? I said, well, if I did, nobody would recognize me. So I just made this my uniform. One of the greatest tributes to George Edmondson and Gator fans alike is how the two bits cheer has stood the test of time. Little did I know, 60 years later, I would be leading 90,000 people in a two bits, four bits cheer. And it's fantastic. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, the fans have got a lot to cheer about, and uh, the Gators are flying high, and I don't think they need me anymore. I can sit by and watch as a fan. George Edmondson, the most famous cheerleader in Florida football history, will now have a chance to stand up when he hears the cheer that he made famous for the past 60 seasons. For Inside Gator Football, I'm Steve Babbitt. This meeting room in the south end zone is where the Gator special teams meet during the week. It has been the home and the starting point for some of today's frontline players like Lewis Murphy. That's what your first thought is coming in as a true freshman. You know, you just want to make your mark, you know, be a part of the team, you know, play on special teams. and. That's a big thing because my emphasis is making a mark on special teams, you know, and that's a big part of the game. So that's what I try to do. Comes in, learns the system, works his way up, becomes a special team standout. Continues that, then all of a sudden, once he really gets the offense down and has his skill sets down, develops and blossoms as a wide receiver. I mean, he's a guy that's really taking advantage of the program, and as coaches, that's what you want a guy uh, career to look like. Lewis Murphy went from no catches as a freshman to the 37 he caught as a junior, which included five touchdowns. It was a season where he saw his growth as a player. I felt I contributed more and learned a lot more and my route running, coach's emphasis on route running, and I just try to critique that every day, you know, coming in and out of breaks, you know, catching the ball, keeping your eye on the ball, and that's what I felt I got better at. He's just a great athlete, so he can run by you. Um, and make the big play, but he's also become a very smart receiver now, and he knows coverages, he knows how to get open. And coming into his senior year, Murphy wanted to expand his game and effectiveness at wide receiver. When I catch the ball, making something happen, you know, after the catch, you know, being explosive with the ball, you know, you see Percy get the ball, you see Rainey get the ball, and you see when they get the ball, they have that explosiveness, you know, and that's what I wanted to work on. There is one constant with all the wide receivers at Florida, and it doesn't matter the size or speed. That's our key thing, you know, blocking the perimeter. You know, that was the main goal going into playing Ohio State. It wasn't catching the ball, it wasn't running route, it was can the receivers block the perimeter. That was our goal, you know, and, that, and that's what Coach Meyer hangs his hat on, you know, physical receivers that can block, you know, because once the run game is established, the passing game is established. As a senior captain on this team, Lewis Murphy takes that role seriously, especially when it comes to the practice field. Just to keep everybody on, on task and focus on the goal at hand. That's what we have to do, and, uh, and that's my job, you know, to 
make sure we don't have any negative chemistry, make sure that everybody's coming out with their lunch pail and ready to work. In the case of Lewis Murphy, he's one guy who practices what he preaches. For Inside Gator Football, I'm Steve Babbitt. Tebow dropping back under pressure, looks to throw the ball down toward the end zone. He's got the tight end, touchdown! Aaron Hernandez got behind him, got open, and got six. Here's Tebow on play action, dropping back, looking to throw down to the corner of the end zone. He's got a receiver, and it's a touchdown for Lewis Murphy. And the Gators now lead 22-3. Here's a handoff, now a running play. Coming off to the left side, here's Dempsey. Left side got a hole, he's into the secondary, and he will score on a marvelous run of 36 yards. Jeff Dempsey scooting off to the left side, scores the touchdown. Tebow handing the ball off to the running play. Chris Rainey spinning and twisting, 35-40 off to the left, into the secondary, 50-40. There he goes down the left sideline, Rainey. He's gonna take it all the way down to the pylon. He's in, touchdown on a beautiful 75-yard touchdown run. Dropping back, looking, looking, and throws the ball deep down the field. It's tipped and then it's going to be caught by Harvin into the secondary. Harvin to 30, cuts between the hash marks to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown! Mercy Harvin makes a catch off a deflected ball and takes it in. 69 and a half yards for a Gator touchdown. Oh, my! Here's Tebow on an option, tossing the ball left on a pitch to Dimps. Dimps to the left side to the 30. Look out, he's to the 20, and Dimps is gone. He's in. Touchdown! Oh, my! And Tebow dropping back, looking to throw. Fires underneath on a crosser. He's got Dimps at the 50, down the sideline, the 40, the 30. Dimps to go Dimps to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown! Touchdown! Brantley dropping back and looking, and fires one over the middle of the field. He's got a receiver. Then David Nelson, great run, powering his way. He's got a touchdown. Now here's Tebow on play action. Looking right, now looking left, and throwing left. Deep, long ball, left side. Lewis Murphy, he's got a touchdown. Tebow hands it off to Harvin on the cutback, off to the left of the 30, Harvin to the 40, Harvin to the 50, and there he goes. Harvin on his way. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. 80 yards. For a touchdown! Oh my! Tebow back to throw. And Hernandez, one hit catch. He got it! Touchdown! Aaron Hernandez, a fine catch in the corner. There's the snap to Harvin. Harvin running to the right. Nothing there. Tries to reverse and sweeps back to the left. 15, 10, turning left to the five. Touchdown! Percy Harvin. There's the snap to Tebow. Now rolling off to his right, Tebow's going to run it to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, and Tebow levels a blow. Here's Tebow handing off to Rainey, and a hole opens up the middle. Rainey out to the 40, Rainey to the 50, Rainey into the secondary, 40, 30, 20, 15, and they got him and just inside the 15-yard line. Tebow in the gun, rolls off to his left, now stops, looks to throw the ball back here, wide open in quarantine, the tight end, Aaron Hernandez, touchdown! Tebow all alone, Alabama blitzing. Tebow throws quickly, left side, down in the end zone. It's caught, touchdown, Carl Moore. Tebow fakes the ball to Demps, drops back, wants to throw, and fires a deep ball down the sideline. Riley Cooper there, 20-yard line, 15, 10, 5, and shoved out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Oh, my. The snap to Tebow. Tebow looks and looks and throws the ball low to Cooper at the goal line. He's got a touchdown on a slant play. Riley Cooper, a catch. Oh, my. Tebow back to throw into some pressure. Steps up with the ball. Now stops and throws down the field and got a receiver inside the five-yard line. Lewis Murphy had it, and he gets to the goal line. It's going to be called a touchdown. And it off to Harvin, a quick hitter. Harvin to the 25, Harvin to the 30, Harvin to the 40, Harvin down the sideline to 50, Harvin to the 40, Harvin to the 30, and Harvin finally shoved out of bounds on a touchdown saving tackle. Percy Harvin has just given the Gators a big, big first down of about a 50 yard run. Here's Tebow, gonna run, jump pass, go to the end zone, and a touchdown! David Nelson caught the jump pass in the end zone, David Nelson scored! He looks to throw, looks right, nothing there. Wants to go left, and he'll be hit, and he'll be sacked as Lawrence Marsh gets the Gators' first sack of the season. 
Alexander out of the shotgun, takes the snap, looks to throw and fires the ball to the right. It's going to be intercepted by the Gators, and it's going to be brought back. It's going to be a touchdown, Major Wright. Here's Rouch in the shotgun, takes the snap and fires the ball to the field, and he's thrown another interception for Ahmad Black, and Black is going to return the ball on the near sideline, and Black inside the 50, inside the 40, gets free at the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Black is going to take it all the way for a touchdown. He'll be hit and drop as Jermaine Cunningham has gotten the sack. Marv in some trouble now, rolls out right, comes down the near sideline, still in some trouble. He'll be hit and dropped again as Carlos Dunlap has a sack back this time at the seven yard line. Taking the snap, looking to throw, fires the ball down toward the end zone, and it's going to be intercepted back in the end zone as the Gators get a takeaway, and they're running the ball back. Joe Hayden bringing it to the near sideline. He's out across the 35 yard line. Garrett Lee dropping the throw and fires the ball. It's going to be intercepted by the linebacker, Brandon Spikes. Garrett Lee in the shotgun looks to throw, and it's going to be intercepted the second time tonight. Brandon Spikes in open field, running the ball down the left sideline, breaks a tackle to the 25, gets to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown! Oh, my! Brandon Spikes! Here's Hartline dropping back to throw under pressure, throws, it's intercepted. It's picked off by Ahmad Black, and see you later! Touchdown! A quick hitter, hands the ball off, but nowhere to go as Terran Sanders almost was there immediately. Stafford under some pressure, looks to throw and fires, and it's going to be intercepted. What an interception by Dustin Doe. He tipped it and then caught it. Here's Stafford to throw it again. Fires down the middle of the field. It's going to be tipped and now intercepted. Picked off by the Gators as Lamont Black is bringing the ball back. Near sideline 50, Black 40. Got to beat Stafford, the quarterback. And Stafford trips him up a little, and Black continues to run and gets down to the 25-yard line. The Gators have their fourth takeaway of the day. All right, here's Smelly rolling back and looking to throw the ball. Throws it away. Interception. Brandon Spikes will score. He's got a touchdown. Oh, my. Here's a quick throw, and it's tipped and intercepted. It was tipped by the Gators, and Hicks tipped it, and Amon Black intercepted it. Oh, my! At the 26-yard line. They throw the football, and it's intercepted. Right to Brandon Spikes at the 35, to the 30, 25, inside to the 20-yard line. Brandon Spikes with another kickoff. Beautifully done. Bonder dropping back and looking and looking, now stepping up and throwing a long ball down the field. It'll be broken up, and it's going to be intercepted on a tip ball. John Parker, Wilson with a shotgun, dropping back under a blitz. He's hit as he throws, and he fires. Incomplete, and they really punish John Parker, Wilson. Stafford again on play action, dropping the throw. And fires the ball off. It's intercepted by Joe Hayden. Hayden down the left sideline in midfield. Hayden to the 40. Hayden to the 30. Hayden now in some traffic. Stop to the 25. Still on his feet to the 20. To the 15. To the 10. And to the 5. And down to the goal line. My, my, my. Gators first and goal at the Georgia one-yard line. Wilson dropping back, straight back under a blitz. He's hit and dropped. Oh my! Jermaine Cunningham has the defensive play of the night. A sack. The snap to Wilson under some pressure. Here comes Spikes. They hit Wilson as he throws. The ball's going to be intercepted. Right on the near sideline, Joe Hayden bringing it down inside the 20. Now cuts and veers to the right at the 20 and down to the 18 yard line. Joe Hayden. There you go, Joe. Here's the handoff to Marino. Marino is hit and stuffed. Oh my! Was he hit immediately by the Gators as they surge right in there. Brandon Spikes hit him right in the chest. Bradford dropping back, up short, now fakes and throws the ball deep down the left sideline. It is going to be incomplete. It would have been caught, but there was a monster hit by Major Wright. And here's play action as Bradford drops back to roll under a blitz. He'll be hit, and he'll be grabbed and thrown down for a big sack. Brandon Hicks grabbed him, and a huge loss on the play. It'll be fourth down and goal. Oklahoma going for it. 57% on fourth down. They hand it off to Brown, and Brown is hit. And stop. Oh, my. A touchdown saving tackle by Torrey Davis. There's the snap. Bradford looking, looking, fires the ball down toward the goal line. Manny Johnson gets it. It's tipped, and it's going to be intercepted. Oh, my. Manny Johnson had both hands on the ball, but juggled it, and Major Wright got the interception. Oh, my. Three seconds left in the half, and the score still stands 7-7. Bradford dropping back under some pressure, looks to throw, fires the ball down the field. It will be intercepted. Ahmad Black took it right away from the Oklahoma receiver. It looked like it was going to be a catch for Oklahoma, but there was Ahmad Black to strip it away. He's got his seventh interception of a sensational sophomore season.
James picks it up on the hop of the 26, comes to the 30, now Pierce to the right of the 30, turns the corner, James 35, 40, 45, 50 across midfield, James at the 40, James down the near sideline, there goes James, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, 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 oh my, Brendan James with an electrifying punt return for the Gators. Driven back to James at the four yard line, drops it, picks up the five, comes to the 10, Pierce to the left, 15, 20, James between the hash marks of the 25, now comes out to the left side of the 30, he comes to the near side of the 40, James on his way to the 50, crossing midfield inside Tennessee territory, and finally caught at the 45-yard line on a marvelous kickoff return. Chaz Henry strikes the ball, it's it very nice, it'll be a fair catch signal, and he fumbled the fair catch, the ball is loose, and the Gators have recovered the football! Bosher to punt, and the Gators are coming after it. Jeff Dimps has blocked it. They sent the house up the middle of the field. Dimps got a hand on it. And it's going to be called a safety. Tim Maste, the punt. Here they come. And the Gators have blocked it. They blocked it, and they may pick it up. And uh, let's see, it's down inside the five-yard line. Tim Maste to try and punt it again. Here they come. And it's blocked again as the Gators got a block up on the inside. Jeff Dimps blocked it. The ball going out of bounds near the goal line on the far side. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. There's the snap, the set down, the kick's been blocked! Oh my! And Joe Hayden blocked and the Gators have caught in the air and they're gonna try and run it back. Major right coming to the near sideline and near the 40-yard line. Oh my! They blocked another kick and this one was returned! There's the snap, a little rugby style run to the right. The kick was blocked right up front, but it still travels upfield and the Gators will pick it up near the 37-yard line. Blocked it again. And it's going to be taken down at around the 29-yard line. But he'll bring it out. And he now stops and throws a pass across to the left. That's a loose ball. It's picked up by the Gators. James Smith. Oh, my! There's the snap. Henry strikes the ball. Hits it very high. A beautiful punt. Arena's backpedaling at the 9-yard line. And he's tackled inside. A beautiful tackle. Wandy Pierre-Louis. James running up, making the catch, and James to the 25. James breaks a tackle at the 27, gets to the 30. James to the 35. James to the 40. James to the 50. And there goes James at the 30. There goes James. James will go all the way for another punt return touchdown against Tennessee. Brandon James has taken another one to the checkerboard here in Knoxville. There's the snap, the set down. The kick has been blocked. Oh, my. Right up on the inside. Had no chance. There were all sorts of Gators there to block the kick. And the Gators take over on yet another great defensive stop. Percy Harvin will take a direct snap, and there's the snap. Harvin running off to his left of the 10 and gets tackled at around the 8-yard line. And Harvin is uh, slow to get up. Looked like he was reaching back for either his ankle or his calf. Yeah, see, the funny thing is once I walked in the stadium and walked out to the uh, field and seen all the fans, I went over to Doc and said, Doc, I need some tricks. I got to play this game. I laced up my cleats and tried to walk, and he just looked at me and was like, no. So at that point, I realized I really couldn't play, so I just tried to cheer my teammates on and stay positive. I just feel like I just owe, owe people back just for being by me and just sticking through everything with me. I'm a hard worker, so anytime I can put in work and and, uh, and, and this is a national championship, uh, if you can't work to play in this game, then you, you shouldn't be playing football.
We gave our guys five days off for Christmas. Percy didn't go home. We gave our guys two days off for New Year's. Percy didn't go home. Percy would spend a minimum of 12 hours in there getting ready with Kyle and AP. And uh, what he did is legendary. And that he put the team way ahead of himself to get ready to play this game. To, uh, we ain't let we didn't want nobody to know uh, until after the game. So like I said, I was I was dealing with two injuries. Uh, it, it, it was good. Uh, I was able. To, I was running two weeks ago, so we know I had a good shot of playing this game. And uh, just with the faith and uh, all my teammates and my coaches and, and training staff did, did a heck of a job. Uh, the first play I had uh, that, that told it all. Like I said, I, I made a good plan at a good speed, so I knew once I did that, uh, I would be all right. foreseen I don't know if I don't believe in that I believe in uh, I think I could hire a great staff I, I thought we could go recruit the best personnel in America or else I wouldn't have asked a bunch of families to move down to Gainesville uh, it happened fast uh, but we, we got this place to the point now where you got a great group of young guys you got an excellent staff that loves being here uh, in a selfish way Florida should be really good I mean you got you got high-end academics, you got uh, uh, fantastic facilities now, and you got the best football players in America within five hours of your front door. So it should be good. Now, the stars got to line right. You got to, you know, you got to hit it right, uh, which we did. But uh, Florida should be real good. Well, we learned a lesson. I learned a lesson. You know, uh, when we first got here was go off Tom Lemming's list or the, you know, the dot-com list, find out the fastest guys and, uh, and the uh, highest rated guys and go recruit them. Uh, we, we don't do that anymore. We, we, matter of fact, we take some guys under the radar that maybe in all my black was not even in the top 300 players in America, but high character guy, tough guy that does it the right way. You know, uh, I could go on and on. We have a bunch of players like that, that we believe in our program. Uh, now that doesn't mean we're not gonna go after the number one, number two guys, but your team and how you win is great chemistry. And, and this is one of the great, Examples, you know, when you start hearing about these NBA and NFL and professional baseball people that, you know, disrupt the clubhouse, the locker room, that's all true. That's real life. And the chemistry within a locker room is critical for success. Uh, Mickey Marotti was one of the uh, most important hires in school history. Uh, certainly in, in our tenure here, uh, he was the most important hire I made. Um, Coaches are only allowed so much time with the players. Without question, the guy that spends the most time with the players is Mick. And the thing that makes him special is not just any any guy that can go in there and teach technique on a bench press or squat or, or weightlifting. It's the motivation uh, of a team. It's the organization of the offseason. It's the whole belief that they're buying into the system. He spends much more time with these players than I do. I have several team meetings, and but he's in it. He's in the foxhole with them, and and the love and trust our players have for him is second to none. He is the heartbeat of the defense. He is a guy that has the. And there's not many players around that has the unique ability to raise the level of player people around, and we happen to have several of them. Pounties, 
Uh, I think Major Wright's got some of that in him. I think Joe Hayden's got some of that in him. Obviously, our quarterback, Tim, has a lot of that in him. So, Spikes, you know, our defense line really improved. Dan McCartney's done a great job, but I credit with uh, Brandon Spikes to a lot of that. And I think the essence of Florida football, if someone said, okay, how would you want your program remembered by in, in uh, the 2008 season? It's very simply three drives, and they're all fourth quarter drives. They're all drives that, it's why we do our mat drills. It's why we do the rope pull. It's why we do the uh, massacre on Valentine's Day. It's, I can go on and on. We do a lot of things that just so much more than bench pressing. Uh, the two drives in the fourth quarter against Alabama to take the ball down there and score. And then the fourth quarter, 12 minute drive, uh, 12 play, excuse me, seven minute drive, uh, culminating with the touchdown pass to David Nelson to win the national championship in the, with three minutes left in the game. That's how you win. That's how you build programs, and that's what we're awful proud of. That's one of those situations, I think, as a player, a coach, a fan, you dream of. You know, to, to call your offense together and say, okay, let's go win the national championship of college football. We're up by three. We need to take this ball, eight clock, because their offense is good and our defense is starting to get a little tired. Let's take it the length of the field and score and win the game. And uh, that's, like I said, that's the, these players will never forget that. Well, my first reaction, I cringed, and I wish he hadn't done that. Because uh, Tim's like a son. You know, it's, it's like when your family member is just cutting his chest open, taking his heart out, laying on the table for the entire country to see. And in this world of cynicism, you know, this cynical uh, of people that uh, always try to find the negatives, which is the majority of the population, you know, Tim really exposed himself. But Tim's always done that. And Tim, you know, he, he's very articulate. And uh, the more I know Tim and after he did, I knew we'd get Tim. That, that didn't change Tim. Tim's always been the same way. If it had an impact on our team, which it did, then it was all positive. Tim's going to make us a better football team. That's no question. And that had a lot, you know, there, there was a lot of emotion as far as, you know, I want to win. And Tim helps our chances of winning. However, whatever decision he would have made, I knew it would have been the right decision. And, and I can rest with that. I can sleep with that. And, because the people that influenced his decision were the same people that raised him, the same people that loved him, the people that are there after a loss, they're after a win, they're not some agent that shows up and says, hey, here's what you should do. The program goals are real simple. We try to clear up all confusion here when we're recruiting. Number one goal is to graduate. Number two goal is to compete for championships and win championships. And number three is if you're blessed enough, go on the National Football League and make a living. Uh, I've never been more proud of the senior class. Senior class has hit that goal. They have two championships, national championships, two SEC championships, 100% graduation rate. Every senior in this program graduated. Four have already graduated, seven in December, and the rest are graduating in the spring. That's 100% graduation rate. Does it ever get easy to say goodbye to a group? Not, not the ones that you love. And I hate, I, you know, some coach might stand up and say, oh, we love them all the same. They're all the same. That's not true. That's not true. There's other guys that have bought in completely. Jason Watkins and Phil Trotwines and Jim Tarts and you know Javier, th those guys, Keiston Moore, Lewis Murphy, you know they have bought in completely. Butchie Raleigh, you know uh, I could go on and on. James Smith, is it ever say hard? To say, is it ever get easy to say goodbye? Not to those guys. Some guys, sure. It's time for them to move on and go try something else. For those guys, I'm not sure we're really saying goodbye though, because we're always going to be. They're always going to be a Gator and we're always going to be a Gator.